you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing and Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, 
writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Doesn't that picture of that mountain just make you want to drive over Fort Mountain? That is the prettiest view, and Gilmer County side is prettier than the Murray County side. Don't tell Murray County I said that, but it's the truth. The Gilmer County side is absolutely gorgeous, but then you get to the Murray County side and you see the top and da 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 but if you haven't been to Fort Mountain, get out and go visit it now. Now, I want you to do something for me. We are working on, um, I'm redoing my cookbook, and basically I'm going to take this cookbook and the recipes that are in there, I'm adding new recipes, but I'm adding stories to it. And if you want a picture of your mom, we're doing a Mother's Day special for TV. We're going to shoot it this week. If you want a picture of your mom in this special, if you want a recipe that your mom shared, if you have a short story about you in the kitchen with your mom, I would love to share it on the show. We're going to spend like 30 minutes doing poke salad and talking about how that is an old family tradition. And then we're going to go to 30 minutes of music and just talking about our moms, our past, who taught us to do what we do in the kitchen. And last night, we were doing a little video that you're going to see now, and it was of me making peach cobbler. And when I realized I came up with this recipe 52 years ago, I about passed out. I was like, are you kidding me? I was a baby when I came up with this recipe. 52 years ago, I started making it. I still make it exactly the way I did 52 years ago. I haven't changed anything. And y'all know I, I'm weird about I like stuff the way it is. I don't like change. One of the things that I used in my daddy's famous spaghetti is no longer available. And my sister and I about went crazy trying to find the stuff we needed. And we're like, holy cow, how are we going to do daddy's spaghetti? Don't like change. But if you have pictures, if you have a short story, if you have something you would like to share, I don't want you to bring it to me. I don't want you to show up at ETC with it. I want you to either scan it and email it to me to The Sherry Show, all lowercase, T-H-E-C-H-E-R-I-E-S-H-O-W at hotmail.com. Or text it to me. If you text me a picture, if you text me a little short story, I can use it from that. My cell number is 404-375-0590. My grandmother, my mother, my great aunts are the reason that I love cooking. They're the reason I love sharing food with people. They're the reason I love learning about cooking. Doreen Lee is probably the person that taught me the most about branching out a little bit and not just doing that country cooking. She taught me to do things that I was like, I made something one day, it took me all day long, and it was fabulous. But one of the boys was dating a girl that said, Ew, I don't like <laughs> that. She did not sit well with me. And I was like, girl, I've worked on that thing all day long. It was amazing. It was called moussaka, and it is a wonderful, wonderful dish. But it's not easy to prepare. So I try to keep it simple, southern, and scrumptious. And right now, get your paper, get your pencil, pay attention. Now, I will tell y'all that this video was shot and then reshot because we had a little glitch, and we had to start over. But when we started over, it was just as much fun as it was the first time. So we ended up making two big cobblers and a small cobbler and shared them with neighbors. That's what Southern cooking is about. And it, it truly, um, we did this recipe at church and raised a lot of money doing that. And if your church wants to have an event, I can show you how to pull off a big, huge one with peach cobbler. And it did very, very well for us. We sent a lot of kids to camp doing this. So... So we're going to go now to me in the kitchen as we prepared my super easy, super old recipe of peach cobbler. 
It is a sunny Sunday in the South. It is also a windy sunny in the South. Do you see my hair? It looks like I've been blown out of a helicopter and I wasn't. I don't get in helicopters. I'm terrified of helicopters, but I will get in a kitchen. So if you will invite me to your kitchen, I will come and I will teach you and all your friends to make my world famous peach cobbler. Simple, Southern and scrumptious. You know what? I've been making this stuff. I did the math while ago. I was good at math, not good at biology. I was good at math. I've been doing this for 52 years, y'all. I don't look a day over 59, do I? Tell me I don't, tell me I don't. 52 years I've been making this cobbler. I can't believe it. It seems like yesterday when I started doing this, I've shared this recipe with so many people and everybody says, oh, mine didn't turn out like yours. How much milk was I supposed to put in it? No milk, no milk. Peaches, brown sugar, a little bit of hot water. But that's the peach, peach part of it. The crust, butter. See that butter? That's a stick of butter, a stick of butter. We're gonna melt this in the microwave. And what button do we push on the microwave? <gasps> Popcorn, because I can't see the buttons because I'm getting older than 59, we'll just say. Now I go right here and I go right here and then I go right here. Uh-oh, did I goof? Okay, oh, well, there I go. Now, I did it, I did it, I did it. I can do the microwave, y'all. Oh my gosh, my teachers will be so proud of me. I've been out of school 100 years, y'all, but I love teaching people simple southern scrumptious recipes and this one is one of the best and it starts with you see this i'm an angles girl i just got back from angles where i went to buy vanilla ice cream two different kinds why did i get two different kinds vicky tell them because it was on sale it was on sale two brands are on sale so we got briars and we got pet yay i love it these peaches this is how you do it Everybody always asks me, how do you find peaches, fresh peaches year round? Because you always make cobblers. I've never used a fresh, fresh peach in my life and nor am I gonna start now because you can depend on this canned stuff. But you have to know my magic trick. And the trick is, you see that brown sugar in that can? You put some brown sugar in the bottom of your can and you fill it two thirds of the way full of hot water. You stir it up and you pour it in the peaches. Now, because we've already done that step, we're gonna do something else with this brown sugar today. Because about a week ago, I was in a mood to make cobblers for friends and I started making them and I had no white sugar. And I thought, oh no, oh no, I can't do this. I see that. It's gonna be okay. You wanna check them? Yeah, let's check them. Look at that. <gasps> How beautiful that is. Oh my goodness, y'all, look, 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 looky, looky, looky. And when I made these with brown sugar, everybody loved them and I thought, see, I told y'all a recipe is only a beginning. You begin with what you think it goes in it and then you improvise. And I was out of white sugar, so I did it. Now, here we go, we've got, this is the magic ingredient for our crust. You see that? That is Land O'Lakes butter. We're using Land O'Lakes butter because, you see this? We support American farmers. We support American farmers, American dairymen, American everything, because why? We're what? American. American, imagine that. We also support anybody who is trying to raise a family and go to the grocery store. I just came back from the grocery store and these two little bitty bags were right at 60 bucks. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are y'all kidding me? But anyway, support American farmers, and you can do it when you shop Land O'Lakes. So do that. Now, y'all, I've told you and told you and told you. I've done four cookbooks. I do not measure. I do not measure. You see this? There's some flour. There's some flour. There's some flour. Now, here's some sugar. Here's some sugar. Here's some sugar. I always tell people, eyeball it. Okay. It looks like it's the same amount of sugar, same amount of flour, and the ingredients have to come out like thick cream potatoes. So, Vicki, what does that need? It needs more flour. And then what will it need? <gasps> more, more sugar, sugar. <laughs> more sugar. You know, speaking of sugar, speaking of sugar, would you love to have had some Elvis Presley sugar? Yes, I would have. I love guys with black curly hair and blue eyes, and this was one. Today is my Elvis day. 
We know today's he's dead too. <laughs> today, he's dead too. Every man, oh, all the men in my life, all the, all those good men are dead. Oh my gosh, that's I don't know if that's a sign or not. But when we look back at our life and we think about the kitchens and the memories, we're approaching Mother's Day. I couldn't do what I do with my, my precious granny, my precious aunts, my precious mama. Everybody taught me a little something to do in the kitchen. And you know what they said? Every one of them said, keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep it southern, and keep it scrumptious. So we do. Now look at the texture of this. Now this is perfect for your crust. And we're gonna, and we've just shown you the crust as it is in the oven. This cobbler is for my bestie because she's earned it. And so she gets this cobbler. And I'm gonna tell you a little trick. If you decide not to eat the whole thing tonight, <laughs> <laughs> if you decide not to eat the whole thing tonight, you can freeze it. But y'all, it is a crime to ever serve my cobbler cold. If I ever hear tell of y'all serving my cobbler cold, I will hunt you down and I will choke you out. Always serve it hot and always serve it with ice cream. And you can use whatever brand's on sale. You know, whatever you like. But this is truly peaches, canned peaches, brown sugar, canned peaches, brown sugar. That's what goes in with the peaches. Never buy a fresh peach. You can't good, get good fresh peaches. Always get these good canned ones and use them, y'all. Use them. Nobody will ever know the difference. Should we tell them the story about that 400-person cobblers I made for church? Uh -huh. The preacher called and he said, we're having a little benefit at church. Could you make peach cobbler? I said, yes, Matthew, I can make peach cobbler. Two days later, he calls back and he said, well, what do you need to make cobblers? I said, well, how many are we cooking for? He said, 400. I said, do what? And we did it. We raised a lot of money and one gentleman, and to this day, I would love to hunt him down and hug him, gave us a thousand dollar donation. He had two big bowls of cobbler, a thousand dollar donation. So. If you have a church social going on, if you want to do a fundraiser, my recipe is tried and true. It is so simple, it is so easy, and it is something that you can gather your friends together and y'all can do a fundraiser too. It made a lot of money for the church and it made a lot of smiles on a lot of folks' faces. So we're gonna take these out of the oven in just a minute. You wanna get another close up of that? Now looky here, guys. Looky, looky, looky. The only thing missing is the vanilla ice cream. These will be browned in just about five or six minutes, and some of these are going to neighbors, and some of these are going to bellies right here. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't forget, share with your neighbors. Do something nice for somebody else. It'll come back to you 10,000 times, but if you're evil and conniving and contrary, that'll come back to you too, so you better be careful. Take care, y'all, and have a great, great day. Bye. <gasps> Guess what I smell? Guess what I smell? And it's not burned. I think it's gonna be perfect. Simple Southern and scrumptious. Simple Southern and scrumptious. Canned peaches, brown sugar, some hot water. Stir it up, put it in your pan. Melt your butter, add your sugar, add your flour. How simple is that, y'all? Simple Southern and scrumptious. And now looky here, looky here, looky here. What you think there? Can you smell that? Do we have smell a vision Wow, 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 wow. It's hot as hot. Hades. It's hot. It's hot. I just burned some of my finger. I'm gonna cry. Oh my gosh. Be careful. Look at that. Crust, crust, crust. Sweet and luscious and we're gonna serve it with some ice cream. So y'all hang tight. We're gonna dish up some in just a minute. Alright y'all. 52 years ago when I started making this cobbler, same exact way that I make it today. Nothing has changed. That is not like me because I alter everything. But when I was expecting my first child, I ate upside down banana splits. So it's given me an idea. Instead of putting the cobbler in the bottom of this beautiful glass that we're gonna serve because it's spring and everything is green, we're gonna put the ice cream in the bottom and we're gonna put the peach cobbler in the top. And that means one thing, eat it fast before the ice cream melts your peach cobbler. So let's put the cobbler on top of the ice cream. Let's do, just like Zesto's on Ponce de Leon in Atlanta did for me, they made me upside down banana splits the whole time I was pregnant. They thought I was gonna deliver in their line at Zesto's. You know, that'd been a good idea. I'd have made the news. Here we go. 
We're putting the cobbler on the top of the ice cream, which is something I never have done before. But I just think we needed to do that. This crust is amazing. This cobbler is amazing. We're taking it to neighbors, but we're gonna enjoy a little bit ourselves. And so we'll do it as an upside down. It has ice cream on the bottom and we're gonna do a little dollop on the top. And there you be. Simple, Southern, and scrumptious. I will list the recipe on my Facebook page. Go to Sherry Dobbs Martin, C-H-E-R-I-E-D-O-B-B-S Martin, and tune into The Sherry Show Monday through Thursday, ETC TV in Ella J, Georgia. We go from Ball Ground to Turtle Town, and we'd love to see you come and visit with us. Bye, y'all. Woo, I'm sitting here freezing to death, wishing we had that hot peach cobbler sitting there right now because it sure would warm up your bones. Oh my goodness, it was so easy, so simple. And I hope that y'all will learn um, the big cobblers that we made. It was a can and a half of the big peaches, the big one. I split all those cans. And then you add the brown sugar and hot water, stir it up, pour it on top of the peaches. That's the only spice I use for it and then you make the crust. It is so simple. And if you're making it like I did for huge quantities for the church, you use a gallon of peaches. Go buy the gallon of peaches packed in its light syrup. And then you, um, after you pour the peaches into your big commercial pan, then you add about half a box of brown sugar and hot water to the bottom of that peach, the can they came in, stir it up, and then pour that over the peaches, and then make your crust. It takes a pound of butter to do the big cobblers, and you use a pound of butter, and then you just sock the flour and sock the sugar to it until you get that right consistency, and it's so simple. And seriously, we raised a lot of money at church with that berry cobbler recipe. So easy, so simple, and you just adjust your butter to adjust your sugar and flour based on how many peaches and how many people you want to serve. So super super simple super scrumptious and the first time i made it was at the woodbridge inn in jasper 52 years ago i worked for a wonderful czechoslovakian gentleman and he said can you make a lot of cobbler i said i can make a lot of anything big boy and i did it and we had customers who would come in on sundays we offered our meal and you got cobbler included with it and we had one gentleman in particular who just won my heart because he would say while my wife's gone, will you bring me another bowl of cobbler? She doesn't like me to overeat, but it sure was good. And I say, yes, sir, I will, I will, I will. So it's amazing how long that recipe has been around and how many times we've shared it. And I hope that that little video made it very simple for y'all and that you can throw it together, something easy, put it on. It takes about 45 to 55 minutes to cook it. 10 minutes to prepare it and so an hour hour and five minutes you're ready to serve your guests and if you get your dinner ready and then put the cobbler in the oven while you're having dinner then you get that hot cobbler out. You sit around and just have conversation and enjoy each other's time so cool all right a couple of prayer requests one today is the day that jen is meeting right now we're on we're on eastern time she's on central time right now and um, she is meeting with a doctor right now at MD Anderson in Texas. So they're gonna be flying back this afternoon. Please say a prayer that everything goes well. She's had some pain and some issues from her cancer treatment, but all the PET scans came out good and we're hoping that this PET scan came out good too. They will know she's in the meeting right now. So please pray for her. Also in Maine, I just got this message there there's something going on up, up in Maine, and it's Christian families gathering to fight for the right to live, for the right for a child to live, to stop the abortion. And and sh and this is the message that I got. She has the the niece who is up there speaking has twin boys that were both born very 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 premature, and uh, they live in Maine now. And that the people are about to pass something about abortion. She had the has the boys with her today who were born very very small. Plus, she said there are two floors of people that are pro life, which is a good good sign, and not many for pro choice, which is a really good sign. If you can say prayers for her and all the Christian people of Maine, please do that, and we will do that. We will ask you to please pray for them. Everybody knows my story, and if my mama had believed in abortion, I wouldn't be here because mama was actually going to give me up because she wasn't able to face her family um, knowing that she was pregnant and not married. So my dad 
thought the easy choice would be abortion, and my mother didn't agree with that. So here it is. All these years later, I'm here. So you know how I feel about it. And it is, the, it is your right. It is your choice. But um, I choose life, and I always will. So, all right, y'all. We're going to take you now to our little city of Ball Ground. We love Ball Ground. We love everything about that tiny town where we are preserving the past and embracing the future. And that's exactly what we did this weekend when the Cherokee, um, Cherokee Nation brought a couple, of a couple of teams down who played stickball and showed us how it was done. They didn't show us exactly how it was done, though, because it was very violent and horrific, and several people died in the real battle. And um, we, don't wanna, we don't want that to happen again. We have to learn from history. And you're going to see an interview that I did with Jarrett Wildcat, and he, he was pretty blunt and pretty honest about the things he told us in the Cherokee at Don Marie. So I want you to sit back now. Um, sort of kind of edited. It was basically slice and dice and we put it together. There we, will be a full hour special showing this once Tim gets it put together correctly. But today, I think it's important that we know what is going on. What is going on in American history? We can't change our past, but we can embrace the future and do better. And I think that's what this will teach us. So here we go. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome to Downtown Ball Ground. We are in, truly, I call this Heritage of the Cherokee. This is Heritage of the Cherokee. Will you please tell me a little bit about why you're here? You've already got me in tears, so I'm going to let you, first of all, introduce yourself. Um, so, in a language, I would say, Shio, Kohen, Tawadihi, Dagwadon. That means, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jarrett Wildcat. And I'm here today, um, basically just come out to have a great time in ball, ball ground, Georgia, and get to watch the game, and I even got to call one of the games, and that was my first time calling it, and I, I had a great time with it, I enjoyed it, but also just teaching about a little about who we are. You know, most people, when they think of Cherokee people, they have their own ideas about us, and so I want people, when they come out here, to realize that we still have our traditions, we still practice our culture, and one of the big things that we have going for us one of my favorite things is stickball, mm -hmm. or in a language called honey told me. And so with the game, it was used to sell arguments, sell disputes. And nowadays, you know, back then it was used to like, this area we're in right now, this at one time was Creek territory. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And then when we beat them in a game several hundred years ago, Go we won the game <laughs> and we won the land. It was Yay. over a thousand acres. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. And, but <laughs> after that though, of course, colonization took over and we didn't have much land after removal, basically. But we're just glad to come here and be able to experience this and just just enjoy the weather, be outside. And you know, back home, it's a little iffy right now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I enjoy today and uh, get to share this with you guys. Well, it's amazing. And can you tell a little bit about, as the game progressed, and I, I love when you're talking about the men, after the game, they go to the river to cleanse. Talk about the cleansing. So for us, cleansing, you know, in our way, we believe water is life. Mm -hmm. um, the sun provides the daylight, it provides the warmth, it helps things grow, just like water. Mm -hmm. Water helps things grow. The rain, the, the rivers, everything is so cleansing about it. Mm -hmm. But importantly, though, when we cleanse, we see it as a way to, like, you know, obviously cleanse physically, like get the dirt and the grass and maybe blood, mm -hmm. but also cleansing us spiritually, mentally, internally, because that's our way of healing. Mm -hmm. That's our way of, in a way, we believe that when the water is coming towards us, we wash our, pick up the water, we wash our, our face, our hair, our bodies, and we use that water to cleanse us because, and whenever it washes off of us, back into the river, it's washing behind us. Mm -hmm. So it's in a way like, you know, whatever burdens you pick up, whatever, animosity or anger you picked up in the game, you use that water to cleanse you and move on from that because there's no need to carry on that anger. Yeah. Now I want you to share a little bit about something that happens in October because we want to invite everybody to an event that you'll be having. Yeah, so in October, normally normally we have what's called our annual fall festival. Mm -hmm. And normally and it's, held it's actually held in Cherokee, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And it's usually the first full week of October. 
and that's usually where it's shared. There's stickball games, there's food, there's crafts, there's art competitions, and also just sharing other bits of our culture, songs and dances. Um, sometimes we do contests on Saturdays within the community, and like lit, like um, I forgot what it was called, horseshoe toss, and uh, the games, of course, and uh, blowgun competition, archery, uh, just all kinds of things go on throughout the week. Can I share a story with you? I came to Cherokee, North Carolina, and I went to church mm -hmm. at a tiny Cherokee church. Yep. And I got to hear Amazing Grace in Cherokee. Mm. How beautiful. How beautiful. And in this little tiny church, it said the membership total was 48 people. And that day, 45 people attended. Doesn't that say something great about your culture that you are believing in, in an, an ever after and a... a where we're going and what our life is about and, and to hear this young couple sing Amazing Grace and Charity, probably the most touching moment of my life. I mean, it was amazing, amazing. And I, I wish I could tell you how we got there, but we came up a mountain and we went round and round and round. What's the population of Cherokee? I want to say it's around total enrolled members. I want to say there's around 18,000 or more, but living in Is Cherokee, that? I'm going to say around eight. 8,000? Yeah, possibly, okay. maybe more. Okay. Okay. Now, are they dying off? Or are they moving away? What's happening? So, here? I think for the longest time it was where we had to rely on tourism for work. Mm -hmm. And if you know if you didn't have work within Cherokee doing tourism, you had to travel outside of Cherokee. Uh, some had to go all the way to Raleigh or mm -hmm. uh, in Tennessee, uh, just far away to work. Nowadays, you know, our kids they do go off to college. Um, like I have a cousin who attended the University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and you know other places and so now it's like we go out and get educated but we come back mm -hmm. and bring the education back I love that. but oftentimes yeah people leave for military or for work but but they always take a little bit of home with them. I think one of the other things the Cherokee population is facing is a great diabetes inflation oh yeah that's something that happens and it happens to a lot of families as we age and as things turn around what about medical care and things like that do you provide that for yourselves within that community how does that work so we do have like ihs indian health service mm -hmm. it is it is funded by the u.s government but overall i think as we, it should be we actually paid a lot of money to fix our new hospital mm -hmm. it's been around for a little bit now but oftentimes because of our earnings from the casino and all that, we actually are able to provide for our own town, our mm -hmm. own, our own yeah. town. Mm -hmm. And we help our own school system. We help our fire department, police department. You know, every organization that we have is very similar to a town or a city in, uh, mm -hmm. in regular America. Right. Let me ask you this. I've been to Under These Hills probably 10 times. Mm -hmm. I never leave there that I'm not angry and bitter. I'm, I'm angry at what America did to our our original. You're the real guys. Y'all yeah. were here before us, and we did that to you. How does it feel? Do they still perform under these hills? Yeah, it still goes on, and actually, if people haven't seen it, I, I beg you to get in there and watch that and see what America did to the Cherokee. But if you or anybody's interested in going, definitely recommend you go. It's going on through June, July, and early August. Mm -hmm. It's closed on Sundays, but it goes on every night throughout the week except for Sunday. It's amazing. It is absolutely, it's breathtaking, and it's, I always leave there in tears. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just because it's real, and, and people ask, well, we can't change history. No, we can't, but we can learn from history. Right. We can learn from history, and I think that's so important. One of the things that we do here in Baldwin is we're preserving the past and embracing the future. Yes. What do you see for the future in the Cherokee? So for me, you know, you've touched on it very well, knowing about your past, learning your past. Because if you don't learn your past, you're doomed to repeat it. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I think for the future of the Cherokee, we're very progressive. We're moving forward on a lot of things. Uh, we have a lot of projects going on in Cherokee. And, um, you know, because obviously, you know, the world is moving at a very fast pace. So we're doing what we, everything we can to make sure we're in time with it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Who is the chief of the Cherokee at this time? Right now it is Principal Chief Richard Snee mm -hmm. and Vice Chief right now is Alan B. Hensley. And tell me a little bit about their heritage. How many generations are there? I mean, 
as far as lineage goes, I'm sure they can trace it back all the way to the beginning because mm -hmm. it goes along with our clanship. Mm -hmm. And if you're enrolled Cherokee, that means you have lineage before Europeans most likely. Mm -hmm. And um, but oftentimes, yeah, a lot of Cherokees before removal, you know, intermixing wasn't uncommon. And the idea of blood quantum, that was an ideology that was forced upon us by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, this concept of, oh, you're not Indian enough, or you're not Native enough. Mm -hmm. That is a concept made by the government, because If you have that tiny drop of Indian blood in you, if you have that Cherokee, you truly have that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, it's going to depend on the person, because of how people are brought up. But for me, the way I look at it is, if you're involved in the community, if you're involved in your heritage, and you're learning it, and you're teaching mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and becoming better from it, Healing as well is important, also. Right, right. But right. that plays a big factor. Well, I want you to close with a statement of how, how do you want us to see your your nation? What do you want us to do that we can help the Cherokee? I think for me, it's just becoming educated mm -hmm. and learning from the source. Mm -hmm. So that means like coming to our Okanaluffy Village or the Museum of the Cherokee, That's where I'm one from. That's my, my favorite trips. I love to go to the village. It's so beautiful. But that's the only thing I recommend is just going to the source, learning. Mm -hmm. And we, luckily at the museum, we have a good, very good, very good resources mm -hmm. uh, for, for genealogy. There's genealogy, we want to learn from our archives. Um, our cultural specialist program, we teach all kinds of things on dances or we give guided tours within the museum, um, stories. And stories, not so much as myth or mythology or. Mm -hmm. Um, folklore, but more as lessons from long ago mm -hmm. being passed on. Right. Have you been to the Chief Van House here in Chatsworth, Georgia? I don't think so. Okay, the Chief Van House taught me something years ago. I have this quilt that's the colors of the Cherokee because we have the yellow for the sun, the blue for the skies, the green for the meadows, and the orangey color for the earth. And I learned that from the Cherokee at the Chief Van House. We donated a piece of property that we owned that sadly was taken when the Cherokee were removed. Oh. Our property was a Cherokee nation. It was it was families, it was 180 acres, and sadly in the year that they were doing the lottery with the land, that's how the family ended up with it. And so I took time to go to the Chief Van House and learn about the history. And anybody in our area can do that. So if you're watching, if you're on YouTube even and watching this, learn go to Cherokee, go to the Chief Van House in Chatsworth, Georgia, learn the history, the true, the true history of the Cherokee, and more than that, promote and encourage to do something better as we embrace the future. Let's do something better than we did in the past. Do you agree with that? Definitely. Thank you so much for today. And tell people, say, come to Cherokee. <laughs> yeah, come to Cherokee, come learn from us, and we'll welcome you in. You know, we'll show you and we'll teach you about our ways and just who we are. I want you to explain the shirt. That's before we started the interview. I was already in tears because you said something about the shirt. At least we have to end with this. Okay, so make sure I don't fall backwards. <laughs> but this says merciless Indian savages, and people ask me. They come up to me and ask me, "What? What do you mean by that? Why are you? Why do you wear a T-shirt like that?" Well, if you read the, the below, it's just Declaration of Independence, and when that direct declaration was being made um, 1776 whenever it was made um, they didn't label us as American Indians they didn't label us as indigenous people which we like to go by now mm -hmm. uh, or Native Americans they called us merciless Indian savages that's all they saw us as and so that led to a big downfall in a lot of things but we've come a long way from and while we do not like to dwell on the past, we also don't like to let people forget as well. Mm -hmm. And so teaching about who we are, who we were back then, and who we are today, most important, that we're still living, we're still thriving, and we're here. Mm -hmm. and, and I can tell you, we had a great grandmother who was, who was 50 percent Cherokee. And medicinal things we learned from her was amazing, absolutely amazing, such brilliance to go to nature and get nature to heal you. And, and it's just like you're talking about the river cleansing. There's so much in nature that we could use today to heal ourselves, and we don't do it. You know, we're not listening. We're forgetting, and we should never forget. Right. Never, never forget. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. And thank you to Ballroom for opening your doors. 
and opening the world to the history, truly, of how Ball Ground began. And it's because the Cherokee came out on top. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, if that doesn't tell you what you need to know about America, um, merciless Indian savages in our Declaration of Independence. That tells us we haven't always had it right. We haven't always gotten things right. Today, let's move forward and let's make sure that we keep things right. Um, I, when I saw his shirt, that was what attracted me to want to interview him. And I, I said, what does that mean? And when he told me, I teared up and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. We took everything that they owned and we removed them from their homes and we made them leave their pottery, their, their anything that they couldn't carry as they walked to Oklahoma, y'all. If you haven't researched and you don't know the history of the Trail of Tears, you need, to, you need to check out books, you need to read about it, you need to learn about it, and we need to stop making mistakes in America because that was one of the greatest mistakes ever made in America. And when our Declaration of Independence declares them merciless Indian savages, shame on us. That should have been, oh, makes me sick. But um, you can go to the Ball Ground Library and you can check out the book Cry of the Eagle. It was written by my late father-in-law, Forrest Wade. That's Dawn's granddad. That's why her name is Cherokee Dawn. And most people know that there is Cherokee heritage there. And um, he spent his life walking the hills, writing the stories, lifting, picking up the rocks, finding out the historical things about the Cherokee from High Tower over to Pools, Pools Mill and Pools Bridge. There are so many things, and, and the poem about Chief Sawney says it all. Chief Sawney was left here in Forsyth County, Georgia to die inside a tomb that they, his warriors left him in because he was too old to make the trip. Thousands of people walked to Oklahoma. Many, many people died along the way. It was a very cold, very hard time, and many people died. So when we make fun or make jokes and say, well, everybody gets a check because of the casino, you dang right they do, and they deserve it. So um, I think that we all need to look back at the mistakes of our history, and we need to move forward and begin to do better and I hope that we will do better in our future. Remember, it's about preserving the past and embracing the future and getting it right. Well, I'm gonna to have to get it right today. I don't like going below Canton, and today I have to go to Kennestown. That is not my favorite trip, but uh, it's necessary, it has to be done, and so that's it. I will be back tomorrow. Um, Lord willing, everything will be good, and um, I will see you tomorrow when we are going to talk about the Hatfields and the McCoys. I don't know if you know anything about the feud and the fighting and the 200 years of families arguing and complaining and whining, and then a couple of those got married. They married each other. The Hatfield married a McCoy, and that was trouble. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart. We're going to talk about the Pickens County Progress a newspaper that is over 100 years old. The same family has owned it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever again. And we're gonna talk about the difference in, if somebody slams something on Facebook, nobody does a fact check. They say they fact check, which is really not true because they got people sitting over in the Philippines somewhere doing fact check. What do they know about the things that are really true? They don't. They just decide on their own little image of what they want it to be. In newspapers, if you're the editor, you probably need to check your facts, and that's what happens with newspapers. I love newspapers, and I love good television where you kind of don't say it if it's not true, and um, that's why I love the history of all of our local newspapers, because the editors are there to really look at what the truth is. And so we're going to share some of that that came out of the progress. And I have some really cool old articles and I think Angela is going to bring us some more. And we're going to talk about that on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, of course, it's Paul Kiker Day. And we hope that he will be back with us and uh, have a good, good day. And I hope there's something positive to say about the economy right now. All I can say is if you walk out of the grocery store with a couple of little bags, you've probably spent 60 or $65. It's kind of ridiculous right now somebody's responsible for that. I don't know what we can do about it, but I think we need to get to working on it. We are hoping 
that this week is supposed to be pretty all week long until Saturday and then like 46% chance of rain. We're hoping that everybody will get out and go to some of the places we've talked about, go to some of the places we share, go down to Talking Rock and get to know a little bit about that area, go up to Fort Mountain, get to know a little bit about that area, and for goodness sake, come down to Ball Ground and get to know about us. If you're looking to build a new home, we have 70 lots available, walking distance to downtown Ball Ground. You can build your home between 400 and 495 is about what the house plans are running. We would love to show you property and it truly is, it is in the background of the footage that we just shot and that we just shared with y'all. The lots are right across the creek. So you're that close to downtown Ball Ground. I would love to show you some of the property. I would love to sell you a house in Ball Ground. I'd love to have you as a neighbor. That's really cool that some of our viewers are now our neighbors in Ball Ground. So I love that, I love that. And I love that y'all are moving in and loving it. Remember today to please pray for the group up in Maine where they are working to um, pass a bill that would end making abortion that long-term stuff that they were doing, which to me was just absolutely crazy. And um, if, you, if you will, if you'll think about those twins that are there and their mom is showing them the example of, you know, they were born as tiny, tiny, tiny little fellers and they made it. They made it, isn't that amazing? And she has them there as she speaks for pro-life and, and speaks about pro-life and, um, and to stop the, the senseless things that have been happening in America. We can change America. We can make it better, but we have to work together to do that. And I think that's very, very important. So if, if you have a recipe and if you have a picture of your mom that you would like to share, um, I would love to have it because we are going to work on a Mother's Day special. And then I am doing a cookbook and I would love to share maybe a story about your mom. I'm doing one about Joyce Bryson and I'm doing one about my grandmother and I'm doing one about Doreen Lee. I'm doing one about so many of the women who have impacted me and they made such a difference in my life. If there's a very, very special lady out there who made a difference in your life, I would love to share her story. So please, um, I, I love those older generations. I was thinking about my Granny Gilreath and my Granny Trammell, two of the poorest, poorest women I ever knew. They'd never owned anything. But what amazing, amazing, strong and wonderful, good women they were. And I'm gonna write about them that's what it's about. It's about preserving the past and let's preserve the, the legacy. I'm gonna take some pictures of some of my Granny Gilry stuff that I've got. It, it's old, an old spoon, cell, uh, a salt cellar and a spoon holder and her bread bowl and so many really, really cool things from the past. That's what we have to do. We have to preserve the past as we embrace the future. Hope to see you again soon. I'm headed down the road and uh, praying for good results. I will see you on ETC again at five o'clock today and then again at midnight. Pick up the phone and call your friends and remember all of our, all of the stories we have done in the past are on YouTube. You can share that, you can subscribe, doesn't cost you a penny. Just hit subscribe and uh, there you go. I'll see you again soon. Bye y'all.